Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today we are talking about de-pilling or de-bobbling your winter jumpers. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. And we're not actually knitting today. We are talking about knitwear and it's spring. As I release this video, it's spring. You may be watching it at any time of year. However, spring is the perfect time to do debobbling because we're putting away our winter jumpers for the season and we're hopefully not going to wear them, I hope, until October or November. But some years I get them out in September because I'm just so cold and I'm fed up with t-shirts. And one of the biggest things I really do suggest that you do now because it's such an important job and it does take time Sit there, take a week or two just to go through the family's jumpers and de-pill them. All those little fuzzy bobbles that appear on winter jumpers. Um, and it's just something that happens with knitwear. Some will be more prone to this than others and some will really frustrate you because every time you wear it there's new bobbles to take off. However, um, it's something that you really should be doing before you wash it and that's why it's a good idea to do it in spring. Depill it, wash it, then store it. If you do that, then you get a gold star for organisation. <laughs> okay, let's get straight to it. I'll show you the different tools you can use and also I'll guide you through which ones you probably shouldn't use because you're more likely to encourage more bobbles if you use them instead of others. Let's start depilling. All right then, we have one of my favourite jumpers here. Um, it's in need of debobbling, not desperately, but I would certainly suggest that I do it and you do the same thing before you um, put them away after the winter. So let's go through the different tools that we can use to go through this process first. So we've got quite a few options here and I'm even going to bring this in tape. <laughs> So what we need to remember is that debobbling isn't the same as removing lint. Removing lint is um, removing things such as feathers from cushions that have fallen out, um, pet hair maybe, anything like that that is just around and about around the house um, and it's not a bubble, it's not a piece of fibre stuck to the jumper. This is the kind of thing you would use if you are um, cleaning down a winter coat, if you um, need to get a suit jacket looking nice uh, before you go for an interview or something. And this works for that kind of fabric. You have to remember that different tools work for different items. This does the same job. Now this is sold as a sweater and fabric comb. It is something that I would not suggest you use for knitwear. It is sold in a lot of shops as a knitwear debobbler, but I would say no. And the reason I'm going to say no is that you may be able to hear this. What it is doing is tearing the fibre. It's the same thing that this would do. This would probably do it on a slightly coarser level. This is tearing the fiber as you debobble. We don't want to do that because as you tear the fiber, you've still got ends of fiber sat there and they are waiting to form into new bubbles, new pills. So this is something that definitely, definitely pass on, put it in the bin um, or use it, like I said, for a piece of fabric instead, like you would use this. So that's something to remember. The other thing is we use, I used to do this. I remember doing it for my winter jumpers, going over them with a piece of tape wrapped around my fingers. And guess what? You can hear that, can't you? It is again, tearing the fibers. So it's doing exactly the same job as these lint combs here. Don't use it. Use it for other jobs. Use it for a suit or a jacket that needs de-linting. Okay, so we've removed those items from our options. What have we got left? We have a pair of scissors, we have a razor, and we have a purpose-created 
debobbler. This is my favourite, I must say. But what I will just say is there are occasions when you have to, I don't know, go into a service station maybe and you need some disposable razors because you forgot on your own. Something like that may happen. That's what happened with me. So I've got a pack of these that were create that were bought in an emergency. And what are they perfect for? They are perfect for not tearing the fibres, but cutting the fibres. It's a completely different sound. It's actually cutting instead of tearing. And you can already see just little bubbles there. This doesn't have a great deal of bubble on it, so you can't see a big change, but let me just do it on this side. There you go that is one of these razors this isn't the sharpest one i've ever used i must say i've definitely used razors that are better than this um where the blade is more prominent this is hidden by the guards so it's not going as doing as good a job as i've as i've used before so disposable razors will work probably if they're cheaper <laughs> so that they haven't got the fancy um foam guards either side of the blade so that's one option the other option is to go over it and take the individual bubbles off with a pair of scissors. I've definitely done this where the wool is chunky and the bubbles are large. It actually works really well. And I will just catch some of these that the razor missed. And the if you haven't got anything else and you just need to do a few, for example, the, he the hem of the sleeve can sometimes just pick up and hold a few along the edge there. That can be a great way, great point to use the scissors, especially under the arm there. So at that point, you are cutting the fibre, you are not tearing the fibre. That's what we're trying to do. Now, what I will show you here is this. If you have a flat jumper like this there's no problem in using a razor absolutely no problem and you can use a fancy razor it doesn't have to be a disposable one any razor you like but you will see under here that we have blades and these blades obviously are covered by this guard and um, we can change the length between the blade and the guard so that it's short or long depending on how we do this here so beauty of this is that any bubbles get caught in the plastic thing here it's like a vacuum cleaner so what we're going to do is just go over the inside of the other arm there you go we've got quite a few pills here that we need to sort out so just switch it on <laughs> difference that made already this is battery powered so you could use um, rechargeable batteries if you want um, but they do last a really long time I've gone through many many jumpers without having to change the batteries on this um, and this is advisable for jumpers like this one which have lots of cables this is the one that I've done recently and Nick's worn it a few more times since but I just need to quickly go over it again and then
and then it can go in the wash um, before we um, store it for the winter. Let me just show you all of the um, bubbles that it's successfully picked up. So this is the bubbles from another grey jumper of mine, the second half of that navy jumper that I've just shown you. And then you can already see some of the navy bubbles here that I've um, just picked up in the last few minutes. So that is a lot of what you would call lint now. So if I put that back in there, we don't want that just sat around, do we? And this is where that tape will actually come in handy. Um, it really is a case of choosing your tools depending on what you're doing please 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 if you are debobbling any knitwear use a blade and if you are debobbling fabric then it's better it, it, you can use this but you're more likely to be delinting um, fabric so that's where this comes in that's that's what it's made for um, rather than using it on knitwear there you go now you know all about debobbling knitwear i'm going to get on with debobbling this jumper and i'll see you next time okay that's good isn't it you now know that it's better to cut the bubbles than to tear them and i do think that's something that i learned that really really helped me it's given my knitwear a much better chance of getting through the season and I'm only having to depill it once or twice during the winter, if at all, and then I would do a big depill in the spring. And the reason I did this video was I was sitting there thinking, right, I'm going to have to put these cardigans away soon and I got my husband's jumper out before it went in the wash and I thought, hmm, these need depilling. And I sat there one evening and I just started using the um, motored uh, D pillar and I thought I should do a video on this because it's such an important part of the process of having knitted something and letting something last for longer once you've knitted it and like you saw with me so much of what I was depilling was actually purchased knitwear from shops and as something I, I don't worry about, I really love knitting small items and at the time when I was knitting lots of jumpers, um, I had more time for knitting. I also was knitting jumpers and filling up my cupboard and going, ah, this is too much. I also started knitting cardigans and jumpers and then three years later they didn't fit me anymore. So while I'm in that phase of my life where I'm really not sure what size I am from one year to the next, I'm buying jumpers rather than knitting them. And it's just, I'm happy with that at the moment. Of course, I'm knitting for the shop as well. So all of these patterns that I'm coming up with, I'm knitting them too. Um, so I just don't have the time for that. But you can do this with bought knitwear just as much as you can do this with your own knitwear that you've sat there with, with um, on the needles and carefully knitted every stitch. If you've been part of the yarn declutter, then this is a great compliment. It lets you prepare yourself for spring. It feels like a breath of fresh air. All the knitwear is organised, it can be stored away, and your knitting yarn is feels organised and ready for new knits as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you again soon. Do subscribe and click on the bell for notifications if you're not subscribed already. If you click on the bell for notifications, then YouTube will let you know whenever there's a new video. I'm here every Tuesday, every week with a new video. I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.